Good morning, and welcome back to the basement. So we have here the raw materials for a lamp. So in this final episode, we will make an articulating joint. We will make a swing arm that will move at the articulating joint. And the, the uh, lamp head, the fixture head, will hang from this end. On the other side, let's talk for a minute about the articulating joint. I will probably drill and tap this to receive a thumb screw that can engage against the threads that are going into this 90 right here. And if you crank down the thumb screw, it will lock the head. In theory, I should be able to just put, go from here to a 90 degree fitting that goes this way and then come up with an arm and hang the head right here and lock it down. The problem is that even though I can lock this joint in place, what I cannot defy is gravity. And if the weight of this arm and the weight of this fixture head weighs more than the counterbalance of the rim of the sheave on the floor over there, then the whole thing is going to tip over. Now what I don't really know yet is what is that point? How much room do I have to wiggle? My plan is to use a T fitting at this point. The brass arm will come up this end and down this end will be a short uh, nipple probably something like 8 or perhaps 10 inches long that will contain a counterweight. And that way whatever weight is up here will be counterweighted over there. And that way the lamp will be stable. I am not opposed to it being measurably out of balance, but it has to be far, far from its tipping point. We'll be wiring the connections up, and with a little luck, we'll have a bit of a tour of the thing when we're done. I hope it turns out well. I hope you're enjoying the ride. So I need a three-quarter inch 90, preferably brass, because the arm's going to be brass, and I hate to switch over to cast and then back to brass. So I have this old tub faucet that I saved just because it's, well, it's pretty. I think this will be great. This will be where the wire comes out after it has traveled up the swing arm. It can emerge here to go into the housing separately. That's exactly what I was hoping to do, believe it or not. Have a look. Kind of have it hollowed out so that I can tap that part right there. Using a three quarter NPT tap. I wish that I had a bigger tap wrench, but you can't have everything. Where would you put it? <laughs> okay, so I have here in the lathe a pressure relief valve, which happens to be three quarter inch thread on both axes. And I simply cut these threads so that there's no taper. You know, a, a pipe thread is a tapered fit. And I simply cut the threads straight across, removing the taper. And what that does is it allows me to screw this piece that I just threaded this inside. I can now screw this completely on without hitting resistance. The reason I'm doing that is because these two pieces together are going to be an adjustable angle joint. This piece will come up from the neck, and then this piece will rotate around as necessary. All right, so I have it mounted in the fore jaw. I just uh, centered it, just using this boring bar to visually get the OD centered, because the original machining is not in the center of the casting. So I need to bore this out pretty much the max that I can and still have it be strong enough so I can't afford to have that hole off center. I'm going to leave a 60 thousandths thick wall and then the other tube that slips into it will be also about 60 thousandths thick. This is my, my test fit and that is nice and tight. There again we'll use the Loctite 680 on it and that will be 
nice and permanently joined. So looking through here for something to use as a thumb screw, we could take something like this piece and knurl it and then attach it to a shaft. We could just use a big round knob, attach it to a shaft, uh, maybe knurl it a little bit to give it a little something to hang on to. What would that look like? We could put this big handle, have that sticking up out of there. Kind of partial to attaching this vintage wrench into place, maybe. Yeah, it's just, it's too big and gangly. Or we could go with that piece. That's a nice little twisty piece. Or if we look over here, this is where I keep Allen screws and shoulder bolts, that kind of thing. Well, look at there. Perfect size, perfect shape, and it's even old. I love it. There we go, locked in. Okay, so that will be affixed with Loctite. So what I'm hoping to do by this is to get a somewhat of an of an aged look. If I just polish the entire thing with the buffer up to a you know a full shiny brass, then it looks like it basically could be brand new. And that's the nice thing about brass is that this tubing is probably 50 or 75 years old. It could be 100 years old, and it will shine up as though it's brand new. But I want the article to look you know like it's vintage too allow the viewer to indulge in a sense that they are looking at a cool old thing. So this head is going to be on here, but this wire is not long enough to make it all the way through this pipe. So there's going to be a joint inside the pipe, but that joint cannot fit through this hole. So we have to join these wires and then draw them through the pipe and then attach this head on this end in that order. I actually had already attached the head and came to that realization so took it back off. For these connections that are in this permanently inaccessible location, I'm not going to be using wire nuts. I'm going to be using these crimped. It's like a wire nut but it's a crimp and there's no way for it to work its way loose, fall off, etc, etc. This is screwed in nice and tight. It's also Loctited so that it won't go anywhere over time. And then our antique looking wire is coming out of this port here and then making its way back to go through the grommet. I'm liking this look. I'm thinking that this is final assembled and ready to go to the next stage, to the next step. I'm going to be using this handle. It's from a, well, that's the wrong size. Okay, change plans. So now we'll screw this into this brass screen door handle. Nice vintagey look. And then when we screw the set screw in there, it will lock that down. So now we have a nice thumb screw 
to lock the articulating arm into position, whatever height you set it at. So I'm going to have this white lamp cord carrying the power on up. And I will draw this wire up into here. So all I have to do now is feed that up in there. And I have drilled and tapped the, the steel right down in here for the ground wire. But again, we're not taking any chances. And so because I have messed with some of the internals just as an absolute fail safe that nothing I did could ever short out the hot to the ground we'll use a grounded cable and we'll bond this thing so that the lamp itself will always be at the same potential as the ground which means that even if there were a short in there it would necessarily ground out and leave the users safe and there it is all buttoned up grounded to here. The rest of the wires carry on up and emerge here with this regular lamp cord where the marked wire with the ribs is the hot. It's screwed in. The, uh, the locking mechanism is strong enough to hold it. And it doesn't seem like it's in much danger of tipping over. I don't think I need a very substantial counterweight. But I do need a place for the wire join to happen. And I do need some counterweight. And there it is, after it's been tapped. So, we want to connect the hot from the supply to either of the leads from the dimmer. And then, what is now the hot coming from the dimmer, going to the hot up the, up the arm. And then the neutral coming up the supply goes straight to the neutral on up at the head. The lamp would still work if the hots and neutrals were switched, but by convention, the hot is what gets switched. So that if the switch is off, then the lamp is truly inert in every sense of the word. Let's plug this thing in. All right, no sparks. We're gonna call that a good thing. Hey, look at that. It works. Note the tape over these, over the hots in particular. Give it a little secondary protection. Well, here it is, all wrapped up, and it works like a charm. The regulator dimmer clicks for off, bring it up to high, and there's full blast. I have two 50 watt bulbs in there, so it's putting out 100 watts, which I think is enough to be useful, but because they are a clear filament bulb, if you bring it back to a moderate level, then it can serve more of a decorative purpose. The swing arm turned out great, I have this 12 pound counterweight. If you loosen this lever right here, then the arm can go up and down. But as you can see, it's only a little bit out of balance. For the most part, 
I can let go of it and it doesn't move much. When I get it where I want it, which can include straight out, horizontal, lock it down and it will stay there. Speaking of the counterweight, the counterweight worked out just the way I hoped. Even with the arm fully horizontal, I have to push the lamp. I can push it all the way up to here before it will off-center the other way. It's extremely stable. Even a hard push does not take it over. And of course, if you'll bring it more up to its natural position, then you can take it all the way over to, to there before it goes out of balance. It is not rickety, it's not dangerous. I think it turned out nice looking. I love the look of the fixture. I like the look of the, of the swivel head here. So the swivel head, if you do decide to bring the lamp out some, then the swivel head just maintains level like a gimbal. However, if you want the ability to throw a light out to another part of the room, you can lock the swivel down and throw the light in that regard as well. And finally, I had someone ask me about the gauge. Does the gauge do anything? The answer is, I think that the gauge is actually a working barometer. I have no reason to think that the barometer unit that was in there doesn't still work. So I've noticed the gauge move just a little bit in the vicinity of the 10 indicator. And if the gauge ever drops from 10 to zero in a short period of time, I'm heading for the basement. <laughs> So that pretty much wraps it up. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed the journey. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, your comments and questions are more than welcome.